At an early age, being able to go out onto the field and being able to have that emotional outpour onto these other players, it really helped me as a kid. And that's kind of the moment I knew that I love football. He started at such a young age. He also admired dad in that dad had a football career. My dad was really good at football. If I was going to get advice from anyone, it was probably going to be from him. And football was the main thing that we connected through. I think it made him happy because it made Dad happy to see him play. Playing football, I always expected him to be the best. So, and, and for him, he, would, he took over that. And I was hoping that he can continue that and then go to a good college, getting an education and maybe getting into the, the league. Coming to BYU was really exciting. It was exciting to be able to compete against all these names that I knew. And when I got there, I felt like I could do it. Well, from a very early age, these individuals, these student athletes are under a tremendous amount of pressure to perform and to be what they want to be and what everyone else wants them to be. I came in my first day knocking heads with all the other players and, and kind of moving up in the depth chart. When he got here, just the, the story changed. Football, in the way that we had all envisioned it for him at BYU, didn't work out. We're, we're ramping up to our, our first game. And we're practicing hard, and I, I go in, and me and one of my uh, teammates, we make contact. My neck goes into a weird position. Came down and then he was on his back and he was on his back for a while. And I just get this entire numbness go down my, my left arm. I didn't recognize at the time that his injury was as bad as it was. And this just kills me that he, he didn't let people know how bad he was injured. Because I had proven to these players and to these coaches that, that I am capable of playing on this team. Athletes are in many ways taught to do that because then you don't play. So what do you do? You pretend like you're fine and you keep playing and it keeps getting worse. We talked to doctors and therapists and uh, we got an MRI and the MRI showed that I had a herniated disc in my neck. He decided to go and go and get it fixed, but when he got it fixed, thought that he would be back. We had, had a place for him, was excited for him to come back. He was getting bigger, he was getting stronger. It fixed all the problems that I was having with stingers and everything, but just having the soreness of the surgery and numbness that comes with it and being trying to come back from that, was was too much for me to handle. He told me that uh, I think it's time for me to hang it up. I might get paralyzed, that's what he was saying. That was the start of what I thought to be one of the worst times in my life. As an athlete experiences injury, whether that's a season-ending injury, a career-ending injury, like Lungi experienced, it, it really attacks that identity. It attacks who they think they are, how they spend their time, their social group, and even the family identity. You know, nine years old, 10 years old, you know, he was playing all these years and then, and that was hard. It was hard for me and it's hard for him. He lost his teammates and now he was in a fumble of not really being happy with his chosen career path. Lungi understood that it wasn't just the, the physical recovery that would have to happen from his injury, but that there was gonna be a, a pretty onerous mental process and psychological process involved with that. Going through such hard times, it was really nice to have the resources of, of mental health help at just at my fingertips at BYU and being able to lean on that for whatever problems I was going through. Here I am at BYU. I have three years left, um, and I'm kind of not liking my major so far. 
Of course, it was very surprising when Longy became brave enough <laughs> to tell us his choice of switching from his major. You sat me down, I was wondering, why, why, did, he, why did he, does he want to go to lunch, you know? He, he was saying, uh, Dad, you know, uh, I just want to let you know that I'm changing my major from computer science to theater. The musical that I watched was called Wonderland. And I, I was sitting in the back seat, and I remember just like watching it and hearing these people who are my age sing and act. And I was like, these guys are ridiculously good. I'm like, wait a minute. Maybe this could be like someone like me. Like maybe I could be up there one day. I know my initial jerk reaction was probably not as supportive as it should have been. And I was just like, oh, okay. <laughs> Acting is, it, it's hard to actually be successful, but it turns out that it was something he was supposed to do. After that, I just kept acting, and I just kept at it, keep, kept working my craft and doing the plays at BYU and trying to, to hone those skills. Eventually, one day, just out of the blue, casting director for Book of Mormon, she's like, hey, uh, we're looking at you for the role of uh, Captain Moroni. Is that something you're interested in? And I'm like, am I? We're in the film business. We didn't know his athletic life had fallen apart. We didn't even know Longy, honestly. Longy walks in the room and he's already fit. I mean, he's, he's a football player. He's ready to walk into this role. And it was so great to, to meet him and then say, okay, we found our guy. It's fun to watch his growth and development and his journey. I love being a part of it. Sometimes you gotta let the kids choose, you know? I'm not in control of their lives, you know? They have their own life and, you know, I don't wanna overwhelm whatever it is that I wanted them to do. Longy obviously was a fantastic football player. And sometimes life throws you some curveballs. And if we can be resilient through that change and that transition, we typically find that we're gonna land on our feet and we're gonna be maybe even more than fine on that other end. You don't realize what other gifts you have. I could see as soon as I started working with him that he had a gift from God to be an actor. We get no more reward out of the guys that go on and become all pros in the NFL than we do the guys that are moving on and becoming successful fathers and, and career men in other fields besides football. This profession of coaching really is about matriculating players to the next phase of their life. I'm not special. My challenges just have been more public than others and everyone has their own challenges. In my story, I hope that people just understand that, that God puts you through these challenges to make you a stronger and more knowledgeable person.